so I'm going to talk about independence of uh, two random variables. Uh, I have covered this uh, last time, but uh, I think I did not uh, do a good job. Okay, so uh, uh, let me start with the definition. We define two random variables, x and y, to be independent with each other if this condition is satisfied. Basically, nothing but it is uh, the joint uh, the joint uh, distribution is equal to product distribution. So this uh, relation has to hold for all x and y and its uh, respective alphabet. Okay, so um, so joint product joint distribution is equal to the product distribution, then we say x and y independent. So here is an example. So let x be distributed with respect to px, and the alphabet here is 0 and 1. y is distributed with the py, where y is also the same as 0 and 1. And uh, let px equal to 0 to be 0 0.4, and then x equal to 1 to be 0 0.6. So that is, that is the distribution px, and then py given as 0.3 and 0.7. Then let the joint distribution PXY given this way. So P00 is 0.12, P01 is equal to 0.28, and so on. If you add them all up, it is equal to 1. Okay, so this is a joint distribution, and we want to uh, ask questions. Are x and y independent? That's the question. Then in order to answer this question, we need to see if joint distribution is equal to the product distribution. So basically, in order to see that, we have to investigate the uh, product distribution. So we need to provide a table similar to this. So if I do it right here, so P, so this is a product distribution and uh, Y is equal to zero, Y is equal to one, and X is equal to zero, X is equal to one. Then I have these uh, marginal distribution right here. So we can calculate the product distribution. So what is the product distribution when x equals to zero and y is, a, y is equal to zero? So that is a 0.4 times 0.3, which is 0.12. Okay, and then what about x equal to zero? and uh, y is equal to one. So four times seven, so that is 0.28. Uh, as you can continue this way, it, it is uh, easy to show that the product distribution came out to be this. And then you can compare that with uh, your joint distribution given, and then you can see that they are exactly the same. So in this particular case, the two are independent. Okay, so this is what it is. And uh, we can ask the second question, which is the, what is the mutual information between uh, X and Y? Basically, since the mutual information is average, of log of joint distribution over uh, product distribution. Since uh, joint distribution and product distribution are the same in this case for each and every uh, X and Y's, 
So the ratio is 1, log of 1 is 0, so the mutual information is 0. So another answer can be obtained by uh, uh, this statement as well. Okay, now we want to talk about independence of two random variables if and only if uh, zero mutual information. So if uh, mutual information is zero, you can say that the two random variables are zero. So again, uh, with the, using shorthand notation here, I want to show that if uh, this one is zero, this is true that u and v independent. And then if u and v independent, we should be able to show that show that this this way is a proof, uh, is a true. So if both way true, then we can say if and only if. So they are equal, uh, equal, equivalent to each other. Obviously, going this way is easy. Going that way is difficult. This one is difficult. Going this way is easy because if U and V are independent, then joint distribution and the product distributions are same, are the same. Then the ratio, as you can see right here, this is one. So log of one is zero, and then the summation is zero. So this this way, going this way is easy. Uh, now we want to focus on the difficult part, which is going this way. All right. So um, we want to consider two different random variables, u and v. We know that mutual information is zero. And then we ask a third question, can we say that the two random variables, u and v, are independent with each other? The answer is yes, but uh, we want to prove it, okay? So proof, let us use the definition of mutual information such that, which is this, and then this is given to be zero. Now, hold on a sec. Now, uh, now it is uh, not obvious to say that uh, the independence, uh, given that mutual information is zero. So, because, uh, you know, um, this ratio could be greater than one or smaller than one. So if you take the log, then the log of this ratio could be positive or negative. And then if you add them up with this weighting, uh, without having these two equal to each other, top and bottom, for each and every U and V, we could come up with the numbers that the mutual information is equal to zero. So it is, uh, in general, um, uh, it is not uh, satisfied. So it is not obvious that this is true for all U and V because the summation can be zero, can be made to zero without having this equality. All right, so we want to now use the Jensen's inequality. Um, in order to do that, we follow that negative mutual information can be written this way. Now, this part is uh, inversed from the definition right here. So top and bottom has been switched because of the negative sign. Now we apply uh, Jensen's inequality to log function. So log function is concave. So average of log is log of average. And since uh, log function is concave function, um, 
uh, uh, function of average is higher than the average of functions. Okay, so inequality goes this way. And then I have removed the log sign right here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have taken the log of summation, okay? And uh, these two cancels out and uh, only left with the numerator. And then some of the uh, product distribution should be one. Okay, so log of one should be zero. Okay, so this can be used to prove that uh, mutual information is non-negative. Now, but uh, our focus here is that uh, when is the case that equality holds? So for the second line, we have used the Jensen's inequality, and then we know that log function is a strictly con concave function. For strictly concave function, this one holds with the uh, inequality only, not the equality part. For the stri strictly concave functions, the only way the equality is met is at a single point. So the, uh, uh, that is the case when the function is evalu evaluated at a single fixed point that is given by the definition of convex function, strictly convex function. So the, when we take a look at the Covers and Thomas, uh, the proof of the equality part is left to the readers. It was not uh, explicitly discussed in the textbook. So basically the equality at the second line, this line holds only if this ratio is a constant for all, for U and V. So basically that means that if there is this uh, uh, equality holds, then uh, this ratio has to be constant for all of all, all po uh, possible combinations of U and V. Yeah, and, uh, but uh, uh, this ratio um, has to be uh, the constant has to be one, otherwise the result in the fault line uh, cannot be met. Okay, so uh, thus we have uh, proved the theorem and uh, the theorem says uh, mutual information between U and B is equal to zero if and only if U and V are independent with each other. So. Uh, this proof is for that difficult part, and then we have proved the have proven the more uh, difficult part or, already. So we can say that we can only so both way has been proved. So in order to uh, think about that uh, problem a little further, we can take a look at the Jensen's inequality one more time. So when the function is convex, said to be convex over an interval, um, but if uh, 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 for every x, x1 and x2 within the interval and the lambda between zero and one, this has to be true, okay? And, I mean, if this is true, then you can say that the function is convex, okay? It is said, uh, uh, strictly convex if the equality holds only if at a single point. So when lambda is uh, equal to one over uh, 1.0 or lambda equal to zero. So for example, lambda equal to one, this part becomes this part becomes zero. So f of x one, and then one, and then one minus one. So this part is zero. So it, it becomes a trivial equality. So fx1 is equal to fx1. Both sides is x, fx1. And then if we select lambda equal to zero, we select x2. So fx2 here should be equal to fx2. So uh, that's a trivial equality. 
And when we take a look at the theorem, Jensen's inequality, if f is a convex function and x is a random variable, then uh, expectation of uh, f of x is greater than or equal to f of expected value of x. And this uh, 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 equality uh, right here also has to hold only at a single point. And that single point uh, condition can be met when x, this random variable x, is a degenerate. So basically degenerate random variable means it has only a single point of mass. So uh, it should be a constant. So in this case, it has to be x is, uh, has to be equal to expected, expected value of x. And uh, at this uh, point, it has a probability uh, mass equal to one. So what I mean by that, if I draw this random variable, for example, the general random variable should look something like this. So here is the real value axis, and then here is the e to the power of x. And then at this point, you have a probability 1.0, and the rest of them, or prob the probability is a zero. So this is a degenerate random variable case. And only in this case, it holds. And then you can read the rest of this uh, writing right now.